Hollis Cleaners. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, who am I speaking with, please? This is Kathy. Kathy, I need you to do me a favor. What's that? Uh, my wife is currently probably about 10 minutes away from uh, being at your place. She's bringing some uh, some clothes up there. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm in quite a little bit of a dilemma. Uh, I don't know how to make this short. Let me make it as short as I can and get to the point. My wife has got something with her now. It's not in the clothes. She's got, like, some jeans and shirts and all she's dropping off, and that's that's all well and good. But my wife right now has a note that hopefully she still has not seen. I just found out about it, and I'm a married man, as I say. My wife is bringing this up there, and I'll be honest with you. There's a, I had a girlfriend, and she got mad when I tried to break things off. Anyway, I find out this morning that she left a note in my wife's coat pocket, the coat that she's wearing. So what I'm asking you to do is this. When my wife comes in there, if you could just tell her, oh, you know, that, that coat looks like maybe it could use a little cleaning. See if you can get that coat off of her to clean it, for, uh, you know, and get that note out of there for me. I would be happy to make it worth your while. Because if she reads that note, I'm going to tell you something, this marriage is over. I know that. And, uh, uh, you know, I feel like I've been a good husband for the most part, and I have made some mistakes. But I, that note is in that pocket, according to the ex-girlfriend. And, and uh I, I need you to see if you can get that coat off of her. Well, now, how am I going to get the coat off? Well, I, if you could, I figure if you could just tell her, ma'am, I, I, you know, that, that coat looks like it could do, we could do a real good job on that coat because it hadn't been clean in a while, and then she, you know, hopefully will take the coat off. You get it. Well, how did the note get in your wife's pocket? My girlfriend, I just found out about it. She didn't tell me till this morning. She said, she said, oh, by the way, your, your wife's going to be in for a little surprise when she uh, reads a note. And I said, what note? And she said, the note I left in her coat pocket. She went up to her in a restaurant. And, uh, of course, my wife didn't know who she was. And uh, when she, my wife got up from the table for, the, for a moment, and the, the girlfriend slipped a note in the pocket telling her all about the sordid details of my personal life and everything. Well, why was she doing that? Anyway? Well, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have been. But I've been a good husband for the most part of when, well, I, when I've been like sober. Well, don't Well, when I've had a drinking problem, when I drink, I, you know, I, I've messed up. But I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to stay sober. And like I say, she's going to be there any minute. Please, uh, just just make a run for it. I mean, to give it a shot and just just just, just try and get the coat. I, I, I'll pay you triple. Well, her. what is her name? Okay, her name is Catherine. And and just say, Catherine, I, I, I'd i like to get that coat uh, and, and clean it for you and fix it up real good. Oh, that's not very good. You don't think you could do that for me? I mean, you're talking about a marriage going down the tubes here if, if she reads How that. long have you been married? 19 years. Well, then you shouldn't have been doing that. I know I shouldn't. We're all in agreement on that. I know that. And I'm trying not to. I promise I'm not ever going to do it again. Unless I, you know, like I say, sometimes that bottle gets in my way. I know, Stace. So there you go. I know it. Uh, well, uh, would you please do it for me? Well, why don't you just let your wife find it, and then you'll be in the office. Well, because then she's going to kick me out. Well, then that be your fault. I know, but if she kicks me out, I can't do nothing about your birthday to celebrate it. I, aren't you having a birthday? Yes. This is Warren Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they got me. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, we wanted to wish you a happy birthday from your, your, your co-workers. Oh, thank you. I started to start preaching at you. <laughs> Hello. Hello, can I speak to uh, Patrick Crowder, please? This is him. Hello, Mr. Crowder? Yeah. This is James Greer. Uh-huh. Uh, just want to let you know that I uh, got everything fixed, got it uh, running, uh, got the dent fixed and all like that in, your, in the Mitsubishi. Okay. Uh, now, uh, we got uh, we got that knocking out of there, too, because I don't know, you know, what, what when you brought it in, I don't know how bad it was or anything, but the boy that pulled it, when they pulled it around, said there was some bad knocking in the engine and all, so I told him to go ahead and, you know, get that out of the way and take care of that, so everything is, uh, we got that. Got that solved as well, so it's running like a dream. What do you mean, knocking in the engine? There was some knocking when he pulled that thing around when we was fixing to, you know, start working on the den and all. He said that thing was knocking bad, so... There been no knocking in the engine. That engine was running fine when I brought it up there. You weren't noticing anything at all? I didn't notice anything at all. Oh, man, because he said that thing was knocking bad, so I had him go ahead and fix it and everything, take care of it. Plus, so, like I say... I wish y'all hadn't done that. Oh, Lord, I didn't know. I thought that uh, you want that out of it. So, I mean, we're looking at, I mean, because they pulled that engine out, and because we had to, it was the lifters is what it was. And oh, so, no. So we're looking yeah. at, we're looking at eight, like $800 total on that. I tell you what, I ain't paying it. Not paying it? No, I ain't paying now, it. Now, how you figure? Because I didn't tell y'all to go in that motor. Well, nonetheless, we did fix it. I mean, I, 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 I don't care. 
You mean you don't want to pay us for work that's already been done? <laughs> you look here, y'all supposed to call and let somebody know when y'all are doing unauthorized work like that. Well, I just thought, uh, you know, like I say, it was well, knocking so that's bad. That's problem. See, that's the problem. You don't need to be thinking. Well, now, hold on. I mean, you know, it was knocking so bad and everything, and I wanted him to try and get that, you know, we like satisfied customers, and I was, I was just trying to, you know, make sure that, you know, I didn't want you pulling out of here and have that thing, you, you know. know. Whether, do you know what's a satisfied customer? I just what... call and let him know what's going on. Uh, let the customer know what's going on. That's a satisfied customer. Well, I, I certainly. That's unauthorized work. Unauthorized. So you're saying you, you don't... make them highly upset. Well, what if I come down on knock off some and, to, you know, come down to like 500 on it? Would that be fair? Now, how about I come down there with a baseball bat? You see, now, wait. You a, know, because that, that doesn't make any sense. A baseball bat? Yes, sir. Now, please don't do that. I mean, I mean, uh, come on. I, I think we can work it out without... What are y'all running over there? Y'all a bunch of dummies down there. Y'all, somebody, uh, somebody down there should have known. I know it. I know it. We really should have, but uh, but I apologize for it. I just figured you'd want that taken care of. Uh, well, let me ask you this: Is there is there any way that uh, man? I can't eat the whole five. What? I mean, like I say, eight hundred dollars worth of work. If we if we just try and get two hundred of it back, would that work? I tell you, what, just let me talk to the man. Okay, hang on. Well, how about this? How about if we just uh, throw in a birthday cake and call it even? Aren't you having a birthday, Patrick? My birthday was yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a day late. We'll knock off another hundred. This is Warren Bradley again. Your wife wanted us to play a little birthday joke on you. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, I, you going to come after me with a baseball bat? I'll tell you what. No, I'm going to come after her with a baseball bat now, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hello. Can I speak to uh, Richard Mormon, please? Yeah, this is he. Hello, Mr. Mormon? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Willis Burton. How you doing? Oh, uh, fair to middling, I guess. Well, Mr. Mormon, I work with all-purpose carrier. We uh, haul freight and such and all kinds of different things. And uh, anyway, I, I probably, I imagine you're expecting me uh, to call, but I want to let you know that I'm a... Uh, I'm just coming into town. I got your cows and all. I want to make sure there's somebody at home. Well, now, wait a minute. You said cows? Yes, sir. I got six six heifers and whatnot on here. I don't even, I couldn't tell you one cow from another, but I know I got some heifers on here on the truck, supposed to bring them to your house. Well, you got the, you got the wrong man. I'm at, I live down here at Twin Pointer and Row at this Woodland Baptist camp. Yes, sir, I know where you're at. That's, that's what I got over here on the directions, and I'm supposed to bring you six cows. And I got them on here, so I want to make sure somebody's going to be there, you know. I didn't want to just leave the cows, uh, you know, if nobody's home. But uh, uh, if you're going to be there, I'll bring them on out there now. Well, you, are you talking about... Uh, well, okay. I don't know what the mess up is, but young man, you know, we... Uh, I mean, did you order these cows and then decide you didn't want them? I mean, I done brought them, uh, you know, all the way from Kansas City, Missouri. Are you saying you don't want the cows? No, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't telling you that, but we ain't got no fence and all this. Well, they'll get out if you're without a fence. So you're going to have to build a fence or something to keep the kids. Cows won't just stay because you tell them not to run off. Well, have you got an address on that? Oh, yeah, that's on my billing papers. I'm out of the truck right now using the phone. But, uh, yeah, I got the, I, I had that uh, location everything, what you told me a minute ago, and had your name, Richard Mormon, on here, and uh, six cows and... Uh, uh, actually, you're supposed to pay part of it on delivery. Uh, have you got, uh, you know, cash to pay me when I get there? No, I'm sitting here on Social Security. I don't know. There's, there's, oh. a, bad, there's a bad screw-up some way. Well, boy, there must be. But, I mean, I've come all the way from Kansas City, Missouri with six cows, and now you're telling me you know what you're going to do with the cow. Well, see. <laughs> I mean, you can see my predicament. I, I, I don't want to drive down here and then, uh, uh, you know, I can't, I can't turn around and bring these cows back. Either, 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 you're going to have to pay me. I mean, you know, I'm going to have to get $500, uh, uh, you know, on these down payment on these cows. Can you pay me $500 a day and then work it out with what you're going to do with them? No, there's no Social Security. I mean, there's just... Well, I'm going to well, I'm gonna leave the cows because I can't take them back. There's no way. I'll just leave the cows and you can figure out what you do with them. Maybe I'll get my money later. I don't know. But I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come bring the cows and y'all can work it out because uh, it sounds like to me somebody decided they didn't want the cow. Well, uh, you know, so happy God, young man, it ain't... It ain't me. There's a, there's a bad mistake somewhere, and I don't know if another Richard Mormon lives down in oh here. Oh, my gosh. Well, I don't know what to do. I, I, but I, I got to leave these cows. I'll leave them, and you can figure it out. But I, I got six of them. 
Well, I'll tell you what now. Tell you what, Richard, what we could do is just kill these cows and eat them, eat some steaks to celebrate your birthday. Aren't you having a birthday, Richard? Yeah. Richard, this is Warren Bradley. And your daughter, Teresa, wanted us to play a birthday joke on you. Oh, I want to kiss her tail tonight. <laughs> well, happy birthday, Richard. And you ain't got no cows. Who is this? Okay, my name is Stephen Ripley. I'm calling about a VCR. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, is that you who worked at one time at least on VCR, VCR repairs? Uh-huh. Uh, well, I had an office that, uh, a little company that had some men in it that worked on them. Go ahead. Okay, here's my problem, because my friend Paul keeps immaculate records, and all, unlike myself, and anyway, I found your phone number in here, and, and it's with the, the receipt here that shows that it was, anyway, that y'all did some work on the VCR. Long story short is... I've done something, I guess, to mess that this VCR is not working. It's on the blink. He's coming back in town tonight. He had everything set for all the soaps that he so dearly loves, and now they're not going to be there, and guess who's going to pay the price? So I guess what I'm asking is, can you please get a new one out here to replace that? I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm not following you. Okay, my v, the VCR uh -huh. that, that you all worked on is no longer working. It's dead as a doornail. The programs that were set to be taped obviously won't be taped because it's not working. Can you please replace it? Because it's not working anymore. How long has this been? It's been about probably four years, I think. The date's on here somewhere. Uh-huh. And... And you're wanting me to replace the... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Because... Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I, 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 can't, I, I can't do that because oh. I'm not in business anymore. Oh, my God. So you're saying that... I can't do it. Oh, my God. Well, what... Now, let me, let, let me you, tell you, mean, you what to do. Okay. Usually, the only VCRs that we worked on are ones that needed cleaning. Yes. And so what we did was just uh, clean them. So if I clean it with, like, what? A, I mean, I don't know. I don't know Shinola from, you know. I, uh -huh. I, don't know, I don't know whether to, like, do I put Ajax? How do you clean it? I don't understand. What do I, how do I clean a VCR that I don't know anything about? Well, the way the boys were cleaning them then were using just a little bit of alcohol. Alcohol? You mean like whiskey? Huh? You mean like alcoholic beverages? Are you talking about the, the rubbing alcohol? I'm talking about, yeah, just a little drop of it would okay, go... Okay, okay, okay. It, it, it wouldn't go on the on, right, okay. on the rubber part. Yes, sir. It would go only on the shaft. i got to do something quick or I'm going to get the shaft. I'm going to get booted out of here. It's what's going to happen if I don't have all my children on. Well, let me go put some alcohol on it and let me ask you this. Are, are, is there any way you could come over and look at it? Where are you? Okay, I'm here standing right here in the middle of my house holding up a birthday cake that says happy birthday. This is Warren Bradley, and your sons wanted us to play a birthday joke on you. <laughs> <That's so cute. laughs> that is a first class. You tell him I said he was a first class turkey. Well, you just, you just told him. This is April. Hello, Miss Ardorn. Yes. Uh, this is Jim Hickman. I'm with the last call, Pest Control and Agadoges. Uh-huh. Okay, I had a bit of a problem, and I'm trying to notify everybody that we had numbers on. She uh, left your name and number here, and, of course, she's already aware of the situation, but I wanted to make sure that you were aware of the situation. A gentleman went out there that worked for us this morning uh, because there had been another. Apparently, she had uh, had a problem at some point this morning, anyway, early. So he went out there about, uh, I guess, about, hmm, I think it was in the 7 o'clock hour, 7.30, somewhere around there. Uh-huh. Anyway, uh, there was a raccoon in there. A raccoon? A raccoon in the house. Really? Yes. And uh, the good news is he located it. And uh, the bad news is he was not able to kill it, although he did attempt to kill it. Uh, so it's still in the house? Well, uh, that's what I'm going about. He clubbed, he, he panicked, did not follow our procedure at all, frankly. Right. And he started clubbing the thing with a, a bat that he, he had with him in a truck. And uh, anyway, he uh, what he succeeded in doing was, uh, not number one, getting blood all over the house, and two... Oh, my God. And two, angering the thing, and... He, <sighs> 
So he leaves the scene anyway. Long story short is uh, he's, I, I doubt seriously he'll be working for us anymore. But anyway, the problem is that we have not been able to get out there yet, and I wanted to warn people before they come in the house. I mean, right now it looks like a murder scene or something. I mean, there's blood, blood everywhere, according to him. Well, is he going to clean it up? Well, that's just it. He's he's left, and, and I don't know where he is. I don't even know what the, and we're trying to get somebody out there, but see, the the girl had let him in, and now I assume it's locked. Right. And uh, so, so what is Maggie doing? Well, I'm is saying, she at school or something? Well, I don't know. That's what I'm trying to, because I want to warn everybody, because one, like I say, there's blood everywhere, and two, it's still in the house as far as right, we know. And right. And so it's still, it's probably mad as a devil because he I'm clubbed sure it. I'm sure it is. And so, I mean, it's a mess. Well, and, can you go over there and well, try to get I, the raccoon out of my house? Well, or? I can't even get out there right now. It's going to be a couple of, probably maybe in a couple of hours I might could, but uh, of course I'd, I'd have to, uh, boy, I'd have to lock the store myself because I'm the only one here right now. Is there anybody that... Uh, you can contact cause that thing. Like I say, no telling tell what kind of damage that thing's going to do to the house. Well, I, I'd say so. Is he going to be responsible for all this damage that the raccoon's doing in my house? Oh, how do you mean responsible? Uh, financially responsible. Uh, no, no, ma'am. There's nothing on that. I mean, that's just one of those breaks of the... I mean, that's just, uh, you know, I hate it. Uh, well, I do, too. But no. I, too bad I know some lawyers around town. You know some lawyers? Uh-huh. So you mean... You're not... So you're talking about y'all, you might slap uh, a suit on the on Well, her? you know, you never know. I mean, if a raccoon's got blood all over our house, well, on the has, carpet I, I, and on I, our stuff, right. I mean, we might have to do something about this. This oh. isn't fair for us. No, it's not fair. No, uh, it's not. Who's but, the gentleman that uh, has been doing all this? Well, his name is Bobby, but I'll tell you mm-hmm. what, if I'll make a deal with you. If you will uh, promise not to to sue, then I'll see if we can do something for your birthday. Aren't you having, <laughs> aren't you having a birthday? I uh, am. Uh, April, this is Warren Bradley. Hi, the, Warren Bradley. We wanted to wish you a... <laughs> Who did this to me? Well, you know what? Uh, I think that would be uh, your mom. My mom? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Can I speak to uh, Pat Kidd, please? This is she. Hello, Miss Kidd. This uh-huh. Is, this is Bob Timpkins with the Tyler Animal Control. Uh-huh. How you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. Miss Kidd, I want to check with you uh, on something to see if you can clear up for me. We had a problem with a with a cat that we're being told by a couple of different sources that... Uh, that you've been taking care of this cat. It's a white male, and it's got black markings on it. Oh, stray. Right. That's where I work. Right. Okay. Well, the problem is that that cat, uh, sometime late yesterday afternoon or early evening, had uh, had clawed a, a, a young man. But I know that you don't technically own the cat, right? No, it was it, a stray cat, and right. I just fed it. But the problem is that there's a thing. It's it's sort of like the best the best example I could give you is like it's like a common law husband and wife when somebody lives together for five six years and then their common law just about the same thing as being an actual husband and wife and one in the animal world the thing is that if you take care of one for over a period of say a week two weeks then it's determined that, you know, it's the same thing as like a common-law cat. It's, it's like yours. Uh, well, I was just feeding it because it was starving. Right, but uh, and that's a nice gesture and all, but what I'm saying is that uh, he is going to hold you responsible, and we're going to, by the ordinances, I have to inform you that, uh, you know, he's already making uh, overtures that, uh, you know, his doctor bills and all like that, uh, he's going to hold you responsible on those. And uh, Who was the man that bit? The man was named uh, Billy Jacobs. <laughs> Well, why was the why, whoa, and, and 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 like I say, we had two calls, and that's how we got got a hold of you. We we were told that 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 you'd been taking care of it, and you either owned the cat or well, it's not my common, cat. It well, was a stranger. But, but like I say, I understand that, but it's that it's that common law thing that you've been. Well, what do I need to do? Get an attorney. Uh, so you don't want to uh, just cooperate and pay the man some money to, you know, see if he'll like I say, he's saying it's probably going to run you a couple hundred dollars. That's a bunch of baloney. Oh. Uh, only thing I know to do is, I mean, you could either contact him directly, you could get an attorney, and, of course, no telling how much that's probably going to run you more than a couple of Well, the thing about it is, I was feeding the cat, yeah. you know. Mm. What was he doing picking up the cat? Uh, I, say, I don't know the details of the Well, thing. and he then you it, don't know the details, and yet you're, you're calling me. and, and Well, I'm just trying, as a courtesy call, to let you know that, uh-huh. that he's, you know, I have to tell you what the ordinance is. I didn't make it up and, and all. It's just on the books, but it's a common law cat. It's your cat. You're going to have to do something about the, the damages here. 
I mean, you can either handle it with him or, or, or you know, just uh, try and get an attorney and fight it, but that's probably going to run you more. I'd just probably just pay the guy off. That is ridiculous, and that it, means now I can't, that poor cat will go hungry or something. I don't want the cat to go hungry. Could you keep feeding it? Because we don't want it to, you know, unless you want to bring it down here. As a matter of fact, I don't know where the cat currently is because after it clawed him and everything took off, it, you don't have it right now, do you? Heavens no. I've never brought it home. It's hmm. uh, where I work. Okay. It lives over there in some kind of field over there by where I work. Yeah. Well, it's not my cat. I just fed well, it. You mean I can't feed a, a starving animal? That's that common There's law. a law against feeding a starving that's animal. Common law cat, nothing I can do. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, is there any way, have you, been feeding that, uh, have you been feeding that cat any of your birthday cake? Aren't you having a birthday? I'm having a birthday, but that cat, I don't feed it any cake. Well, see, this is Warren Bradley. We wanted to wish you a happy birthday. Well, thank <laughs> you, but you know what? Is this a joke? <laughs> huh? It is indeed. Some <gasps> of your friends wanted us to play a joke on you. Pat. Oh, my gosh. I was just sitting here thinking, <laughs> it's a joke? <laughs> and it's my birthday. Yes, it is my birthday. I'm getting older and older and older. Oh, I was so upset about it. I yeah, th some of your, some of your, I think some of your coworkers wanted us to do this to you, Pat. I can't believe they did it. You know what? They're going to cause me to have a heart attack. Well, we don't want that. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Can I speak to uh, Charlotte Bailey, please? This is she. Hello, Miss Bailey. Uh-huh. This is R.C. Watson. Uh-huh. How you doing? Fine. Uh, Miss Bailey, I got a little bit of a problem I wanted to, uh, to let you know about uh, before, it, uh, before I made matters worse. Uh, I have got to go in there and tear that floor up again in the, in the master bedroom. Why? Oh, man. This is a little bit embarrassing, but let me just tell you the truth. Ain't no sense in lying about it. Uh, about a month ago, before we put that floor in, I was uh, I was playing Mr. Big Shot because there was a gal from the office that came out there on, while we were there for just a moment. She came out there to hand us some to give the boss some paperwork and whatnot. And anyway, playing Mr. Big Shot, I took my wedding ring off, and I'm like, uh, you know, hey, you know what's going? On? I'm flirting around. Didn't mean nothing by it, but anyway. Okay, uh, that kind of sidetracked me, and I, I left that, that wedding ring laying there. Well, it hit me like a bolt of lightning here uh, last week at Thanksgiving when I'm sitting around still getting chastised by my wife, wanting to know where that ring was at, and I, I didn't have any explanation for it. But now I know where it is. It's coming back to me just as clear as it can be. That ring is in that floor, and so I've got to go in there. You know that they've already painted the walls. I know that. And I've got to move in in two weeks. I know that. And believe you me, I don't know how in the world with me tearing that floor up, you're going to be able to move in in two weeks. I'm going to move in in well, two weeks. Well, you can move in, but like I say, I mean, that's, you know, it's it's going to be, it ain't going to be ready, um, you know, Miss Bell. I'm not going to be in by Christmas. Oh, whoo. Listen, well, y'all, I don't have any heat in this house. Yeah, but I ain't going to have a wife. See, That's not I, my fault. Well, I know it. It sure ain't. But uh, I'm just saying, I'll do my best. I'll get in there and work as quick as I can, work some overtime. Of course, that's probably going to cost somebody a little extra. I don't not know. me. Well, I don't know. They it's may your pass, fault. They'll pass it on to you. I know. I know it is. I'm willing to take responsibility, but I'm just saying, I've got to get in there and get that ring. And you can see my problem. No, I can't. You can't see that? I can't understand why a man would do that. Well, I, I didn't. Did. Well, I was flirting around. You know how men are. I no. was. And, and and usually when I'm sober, I don't do that, but I did. And uh, anyway, I'm going in there to get the ring, and I'll work as hard. And then I'll have to repaint it. Well, yeah, I know. That's a BB. That's a bad break. No, uh, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen? Uh-uh. How you figure? You well, ought to buy yourself a new ring because well, you're the one that, that has a lot of sentimental value. Has a sentimental value to it. Well, you should have thought of that. I know, but I didn't. I don't know if you could. If I'm gonna let you do it, I'm. Well, I don't. Serious. I mean, hey, hey, hey. I mean, I'm. I'm going. I, I gotta go. I've already made up my mind on that. I'm going in. Uh. Well, you might not. How you figure? You're not threatening me with a. You're not gonna have a gun or something. No, I might have a sheriff here. Sheriff. Uh -huh. Don't get the law, please. Don't get the law. Well, I might. I've had trouble with them before, and I also. Can't help it. Well, I, I, let me ask you this. I, 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 would you not get the law if, if I promised to, 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 like, make a birthday cake for you? Aren't you having a birthday? Oh, no. This is Warren Bradley. Dead. We, we wanted You're to wish, dead. <laughs> Charlotte, we wanted to wish you a happy birthday. I'm going to kill my children. Hello. Hello. Is this Miss Miley? Yes, it is. Miss Miley, this is Clarence Timpson with the Ramada in Bossier. Yes. How you doing? Doing fine. Uh, Miss Miley, you uh, y'all stayed uh, with us. Uh, I believe you checked out yesterday. Is that right? That's right. Miss Miley, I, let me just get to the point. There's no need of me just uh, beating around the bush or anything. I sure would like it if we could get our little statue back. 
What are you talking about? Well, we have a video system in the hotel, as most hotels do, and uh, ours is right there. Our main one is right there by the desk, and as your husband and yourself were checking out, and that way we know who the uh, people are as they sign in and out and that kind of thing and pay the bill. Anyway, uh, our camera clearly shows that you uh, strolled over uh, right there by the restaurant. We had our little Ramada symbol. It's a little two-headed boy statue and put it in your purse, and we would sure like to get that I didn't money. even have my purse with uh -huh. me. Well, I don't know if you, I certainly wouldn't think your husband had one, or uh, it, it could have been a bag. I mean, uh, the video's not that clear. I don't know who you seen take it, but it definitely was not me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you don't have our little two-headed boy? No, I do not. Hmm. Uh, well, I don't now, I want to see your video. Well, I'd be happy to... Um, to show it to you. Yes, I do. Uh, and I will have a lawyer present when mm -hmm. you show it. Please don't get a lawyer. I I, I don't want to upset you or anything. And I you have you. upset me because I d mm -hmm. did not mm -hmm. take no statue. It's just that I'm in charge of uh, trying to... I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Now, I want to know when I can meet with you uh -huh. and see uh -huh. this, uh -huh. and I will have our lawyer present. Okay. All right. Well, that's fair enough. I believe that's fair enough. Cause, okay. Uh, when do you want to meet? Well, i tell you what. i got to get me a... Well, if you're going to bring a lawyer, I'm going to have to have a drink first. But uh, I guess what we need to do is try and meet today because your birthday will be over uh, soon. Aren't you having a birthday? Yes, I am. This is Warren Bradley. We wanted to wish you a happy birthday. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that, Gene. Yes, I can say that. <laughs> I guess you can. You just did. <laughs> yes, I did. Hello? Hello, Mr. Selman? Yes. This is Jack Thomas out of Orlando, Florida. Right. How you doing? Fine. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this early this morning. I wanted to try and catch you uh, as soon as uh, as soon as I could because uh, I'm, we got a little bit of a problem. Unless maybe, hopefully, the problem is on my end on the uh, on the paperwork. On uh, yeah, a couple months back, you and you, your wife got married. Then, right? Right. Okay. Now, at that time, all right, you got you got married in New Orleans, right? Yes. Okay, but. The problem that I'm showing up on the paperwork, and like I say, hopefully it's the mistake is on, on my end here. Did you purchase the license in New Orleans? Uh, no, we got the license in uh, Caddo Parish in Shreveport. Well, see, that's what, I'm, that's what I was afraid of. That's what I'm showing. I don't know, obviously you didn't, but it's, it's in the paperwork, and I, I've got it. I don't know how to sugarcoat this at all, but... Uh, Stephen, that thing is not is not valid. Uh, it, the marriage license has got to be purchased in the parish uh, to which you get married. Well, that's not what they told us now. Well, who told you that? The people in Shreveport. Well, I don't know how you know. I don't know who told you or why they told you or how, but and and from everything I know, I'm telling you the thing is not good. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll I'll call them and I'll find out. You know, I mean, you can call them and see, you know, what they say and tell them to check uh, more thoroughly. But if you'll dig out that, that the paperwork, uh, your paperwork, it should be in there. Uh, unless there was a big omission in there, there is a part. And uh, granted, it's it's a small area, but, I mean, it should be on there. But if you want to, you know, you can call them and call me back later if you want. But, uh, uh, you know, it's something I think, you know, I needed to bring your attention and... Uh, right, right. I I do distinctly remember seeing a part saying that it needed to be in Orleans Parish, and we specifically called several times to y'all and also to Orleans Parish, yeah, and asked them if we could go to another parish. And when we called them and talked and even spoke with them when we went down to get the marriage license, yeah. they said it was valid in any parish. Yeah, just like a marriage license would be valid in any county in the state of Texas. Man, I don't know why. And I can't, I'm clueless as to why they would have told you that, because that is no more true. Uh, I, that is just not right. I, I, I'm baffled by it. If you had names on them, I'd be, I'd be wanting to pick up the phone and call them myself to, to see if I can get an explanation out of this. Right. Well, I even asked the preacher. Oh, my God. When we were there on the ship, and he said it was and, valid. And the preacher told you that? Yes. Oh, man. Um... Uh, the only thing I know to do, I mean, the only thing I could do on my end is, you know, I could try and, you know, 
I can, you know, but I'd that'd be risking my job if I if I was to uh, you know try and maybe show that this thing uh, actually was purchased in uh, New Orleans Parish. I mean, I could, uh, but boy, I'd I'd be risking my job then, and I'd have to, uh, I mean, I'd have to ask for a little something, you know, for that if I'm gonna put my job on the line. Well, there ain't gonna be no little something. What do you mean? Well, I don't know what you're asking. Well, I'm just you know telling you if I was gonna make some extra effort, look like you'd want to take care of me. Well, no, there ain't no gonna be no damn little extra effort. Well, I mean, I don't get upset. Thing, I, I'm, well, just try, I'm just trying to help you out. Uh, well, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, because what you're calling and telling me at 5:45 in the morning is that my ver- my marriage license hadn't been valid for the last three months. Well, what I'm actually telling you, Stephen, at 5:45 in the morning is that I, I wanted to wish you a happy birthday, and your marriage is valid. This is Warren Bradley. We wanted to wish you a happy birthday. Uh-huh. <laughs> Is that right? Uh, well, I apologize for the vulgarity, but... Uh, that's all right. That's understandable. A uh, man tells you your marriage is invalid at that time of the morning, that's uh, that's kind of upsetting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stephen, your wife set you up on this. Oh, yeah. I see her. Is- <laughs> She'll pay for that one.